cryptic will start tomorrow morning and I highly encourage you to interact with him tomorrow tomorrow morning when he will start. He will start his painting his wall at the four, um, at the third floor, just at the at the entrance. Just to introduce the, the artist, uh, Faridzan Faridzan, professionally known as a Speak Cryptic, and I highly encourage you to follow him on Instagram. He published many, many things, very interesting uh, works. He's a visual artist working and living in Singapore, inspired by the visual language prevalent within the cultures of comics and underground music. His work primarily deals with the issues pertaining to the human condition, utilizing personal iconographies and cast characters that he has developed over the years. He applies them to various narrative inspired by his observations on current affairs and his immediate environment. Uh, Speak Cryptic's exhibitions include uh, many, many exhibitions actually, and recently a solo show at Chan Contemporary in Singapore, <coughs> Officina delle Zaterte, Venice, and a group exhibitions such as Secret Archipelago in Paris, the Singapore Biennale in 2013, Budidaya in Singapore as well, Future Proof, and he is a member of the DXXXXD collective, and he plays as well the electric bass for the Singaporean bass band. Please welcome Speak Cryptic. Hey everyone, um, I'm sorry for the wait, there was uh, some technical difficulties. Um, my name is uh, Farzwan Fajari, um, I'm a bit nervous, uh, I'm, I'm quite nervous when I'm talking to people of this scale. So, uh, my name is Farzan Fajari, you can call me one. Um, it's easier to remember, just the number one. Um, I'm also professionally known as Speak Cryptic, it's my artist name. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a quick 20 minute presentation of, of, uh, of what I've been doing with my life for the, past, um, for the past couple of years. So I'm just gonna get right into it. Um, I was born in 1980, so that makes me 38, right, 38 years old. I had graduated from La Salle College of, uh, of the Arts in 2007, and I've been an artist since 2005. I've been trying to be an artist for the longest time, but I think like professionally, I became a full-time artist in 2005. So I've been doing this for the past, again, very bad with Matt, uh, 13 years, there you go, right? So. Um, I started out as a, as a street artist, so when I was starting out back in 2005, I did stickers, I did a lot of uh, wheat pasting, I did a lot of posters, I did some spray painting on the streets, but I'm not going to show you those um, pictures for, uh, for various reasons. Uh, but I just want to, again, just give you an idea of, of what I do. So since um, 2005, I've been doing a lot of drawings, I try to draw every day. And um, he, has, he has become a, I guess he has become a, a point where it became so much a part of me. So I use um, characters that I've developed over the past 13 years to tell stories, to tell uh, different various narratives that I find to be important. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of my drawings. So these are more of my recent works. Um, the reason why they look like this is because they are a reflection of my own identity. I am Singaporean, I am Malay, I am also um, of Boy Boyanese descent. I'm not sure whether you've heard of the term Boyanese, but what it is is that it's an island off the coast of Indonesia, and my late grandfather was from this small island right over there. So um, I wasn't born there, I was born in Singapore. But on my identity card, it says race Boyanese, so that's who I am. And at the same time, um, I listened to, uh, when I was growing up, I was listening to a lot of punk rock, um, alternative music, and I've been playing in a band, or I've been playing in bands since I was 13 years old, so I subscribe to those kind of uh, lifestyle, if, if you will. So a lot of my drawings has been inspired by these two things, which I feel makes up who I am. So, so these are the kind of drawings I, I do. Um, the reason why they are in black and white is because I'm partially colorblind. So it's nothing too serious. I can see primary colors just fine. I can see red, yellow, green. But if you 
put dark red and light red and then you want me and then there's the shades in between and then you want me to put the lightest to the darkest I have trouble so there have been many times many um, instances where I would go to a store and I would buy something thinking it was a, like a color but it's not the color that I wanted so um, so my wife to um, taught me to read the labels before I buy it so I know that no nowhere no N O I R is black. So um, and I and I'm trying to like find out like what black means in different languages. So if I'm out of the country and if I'm buying something black, you know, I, at least I know what black is. So um, so yeah. So these are the, the the kind of drawings I did. This is uh, uh, one of my most recent works. So the headdresses um, actually come from this idea of being Malay. Um, it has influenced my my work as well, and I also do murals. This is one of my uh, earliest uh, murals in a in a museum. So in 2011, I was invited by the Singapore Art Museum to do a, a a mural of this scale. It's four stories high, not high, but you know if you go up the the, the stairwell, it's like four stories long, and um, this particular piece is called Kake, which is uh, a Boyanese word for stubborn, which, uh, which I was when I was younger. I, I'm, I, st I still am, but when I was growing up, like I remembered, like my mom kept using that word on me, so it kind of stuck. So the the work in itself is again just about my identity as well. Um, this is a mural that I did in a uh, Palais de Tokyo in Paris. So this was in uh, 2015, and. Uh, Again, it's about my, my struggle with my own identity. So, so I was given the task to, to paint the mural at the, uh, the lobby, and I believe I was the first one to do so. So I wanted to paint like a, like sort of like a battleground scene where I'm fighting against my own instincts and trying to find out who I am. So all the, the characters, the, the little people, um, I, I feel like my, it's like my self-portrait. So I spent a month in, in Paris, great city. I was there for a month. I stayed beside the Louvre, but I've never been to the Louvre. So it was just daily just going from the museum back to where I was staying and then, yeah. So um, my friend told me that if you've never been to the Louvre, then you've never been to Paris. So I should probably go back again. Um, this is another mural that I did um, called Minor City. So we at the Esplanade. This is the longest mural I've ever done. It's 97 meters long. And uh, what it featured was uh, buildings and faces in the buildings. So this work is a bit different. It was talk talking about this idea of progress and how Singapore is always trying to build new things over and over again. So the give you a better. So this is how long it was. Um, I was given two weeks to finish this, and I did it. I did it in in two weeks, and then at the end of the. Uh, at the end of, of, of painting it, I felt sick because it was it was it was really horrible, but it was fun at the same time. So, um, so yeah. And then um, and then the the exhibition, this particular exhibition, was up for a, for a month. And uh, during that entire month, I would come back and I would paint it white again, and I would build new buildings. So I did like a, a Instagram um, competition, you know, for people if they find new buildings, take a picture and then send it to me on Instagram, and if you manage to see it, then you win a prize. Um, people have attempted, but no one won, so I kept the prize. Um, this is a work called Kama Chameleon, which happened in 2015 again. So in 2015, there was this huge event called Singapore Inside Out. It was to celebrate Singapore's 50th, um, I guess, um, in the you know, 50th year, 50th, 50th year of being independent. So we, we staged a, a huge um, circus of, you know, creative, uh, I guess it was a, a creative exhibition of sorts. So we had about, I think about 14 to 15 Singaporean artists and we traveled to Beijing, London, New York, and then to Singapore over the course of one year. And this is the work that I created for that particular exhibition. So this is called Kama Chameleon. It was uh, um, inspired by the song Kama Chameleon by Boy George. Not sure if you know the song. Um, but what it is, is this is a, an exact, exact replica of my room. 
And and when I when I'm doing it, um, I invited the public to come in and paint alongside with me. So I wear my headphones, and then the public, if you see the the colors on on the side, so the the the, the public would come in and paint in color, and I would paint in black and white. So it was more like a dialogue. So it happened within the course of five days. I would stay in the room for eight hours straight, and people would come in and paint alongside with me. So this is day one. And this is the last day, and this was in in uh, in Beijing. So a lot of things, like a lot of interesting, happened um, during the the the, the course of, of that time. So Beijing, London, New York. In New York, uh, the bed broke uh, because someone stepped on it, and the and the bed broke, and everyone's panicking. But um, I thought it was a a good excuse to get rid of the bed. So when the bed left, I drew my mattress on the floor. So this is, um, I also do installations. This is uh, something I did in 2011. It was called Slow and Steady. So it was a life-size uh, cardboard cutout of my characters. And it was, um, it was displayed at the Singapore Museum at 8Q at the, the glass panel. So people could walk by and see it. And, um, and again, the, the work is still pretty much the, the same thing. Um, this one was for the Singapore Biennale in 2013. Um, this piece is called Phenomena, and and I did an installation over at the National Library. So this is, I did about 12 pieces um, painted on white cloth, and then we hung it up at the National Library, the the, the outside foyer, I think. And um, each piece is about uh, 200 centimeters by 125 centimeters. And it features um, Western icons or icons that I kind of grew up with and uh, dressed up in traditional Malay clothes. So you have Elvis Presley, the guy from KFC, uh, you have Big Roof, you have Wonder Woman, you have uh, Che Guevara. Um, behind you have Sid Vicious. I'm not, not sure if you know who Sid Vicious is, but he's uh, uh, in a band called Sex Pistols. Um, and behind here, you have like Mr. T from A Team. Um, and this one, which you can't see, is a uh, Lady Gaga wearing the headphone, eh, the, the the phone hat thingy, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this one uh, was something I so recently did. I w I'm trying to do a bit more like sculptural work. So I was commissioned to do um, a pretty huge. I have no idea how how big it is, but it's probably like twice my size. And uh, it's for the Civic District Outdoor Festival, which happened last year. And we, we did this in Malaysia, so I had to travel to Malaysia to do it. And we had only like a day for me to paint. Um, so they, I, I gave them a sketch of my characters. They built it up. And I went over in a day. And I painted this and this one. Okay, dokey. And I also do like little performance pieces. Um, so quite recently, I have people dressed up as my characters. So they do little performance pieces as well. So we did one in 2016. This is just a still shot of them. Uh, this is the last scene. So, so um, in 2016, there was this festival called um, Singapore with SIFA, and it's. Um, uh, for the open open festival, so we we staged a performance at the Old Kalang Airport. We had seventy five people dress up in my um, characters, and then uh, we did little strange things like dance with the public and uh, played cards with the public as my characters. Um, uh, we're gonna stage another one this coming Thursday on the eighteenth, eighteenth of January, um, over the Art Science Museum. And um, it's not going to be 75 people. We're going to have about nine to 10 of them, again, dressed up in my, um, as my characters. And uh, we're going to do a little performance on the subject of getting over a heartbreak. So, so if you are free, drop by. We start at 7 PM. And it's free. I do paintings as well. These are some of my recent paintings that I did for my solo show in 2017, which was uh, earlier, earlier last year. So I'm, um, I'm st I've started a little series of landscape, landscape paintings of places that I kind of um, spent a lot of time when I was younger, where, where I met new friends and 
um, form new bands and had arguments. So I did like a, a landscape series. So this is based on Liat Towers. And we used to hang out at the steps. Um, we used to call this place Punk Planet. But, um, and before this, there was a, there was a Planet Hollywood. Um, it's no longer there, but I think it's a bank right now. Um, and this building is based on Plaza Singapore, the old Plaza Singapore. Um, in the late 90s, there was this uh, guitar store on the third floor. And uh, I couldn't afford the guitar, so me and my friends would go there and we would pick up a guitar and I would learn how to play a song from my, from my friends. And uh, we would annoy the, the guy who, who was working there all the time. Um, this is Forum the Shopping Mall. Again, a lot of time was spent there, especially at the McDonald's. Um, this is the substation. So the old substation in Singapore at the, um, it's now the Timber, but before it was the Timber Cafe, it was this cafe called Fat Frog. It was a place where a lot of bands would come in and play and it was more like a free space. Um, and, and it's no longer there again, so. And this particle painting, is uh, based on the on the speaker's corner. So uh, this particular painting is the one that's gonna that has inspired me to create um, this series of works where we're talking about you know heartbreak and stuff. So this is uh, a scene, a post-protest scene. But the thing is, um, I don't. I'm not it's very political, but I feel that if my characters, if the characters in my drawings were gonna protest about something, what would it be? Um, and I thought that it'd be funny if they would protest against the idea of their boyfriends or girlfriends breaking up with them. So if you look at the signs, it's known as says, don't leave and stay here with me and miss you and right here and forever. Um, this particle painting is now hanging in Kuala Lumpur for the Kuala Lumpur Biennale. Uh, this particular work was created during the duration of my solo show. Um, I painted it live, and the reason why this painting came up was because people were asking me when they would look at the at the painting before that. Um, they were asking me like, "What happened to these characters? What happened to these guys? Did they manage to get back together with their girlfriends or boyfriends?" And I didn't know. I didn't know what to answer, so I created this piece of, um, of them moving away from the scene. So it's the same scene as the one. Um, behind there's the speaker's corner, so it, it showcases, showcases them just moving away. And um, so this new particular piece is brand new. I just, um, I just finished this about three days ago. It's for this exhibition called Art from the Streets, which is um, going to open tomorrow. And this work is called A State of Decline. The same kind of concept, but instead of uh, speaker's corner, they're now at the substation. So for the next couple of years, what's going to happen is that I'm going to be creating new pieces of work that um, have the same kind, of, same kind of thing, same people, but just moving in different locations. So we're going to have them at the substation and then um, uh, Plaza Singapore, Liat Towers and Forum. And then at the end of the exhibition, at the end of this entire thing, what uh, we are planning to do is we are planning to stage uh, another performance, like a speed dating performance, where my characters will come to life and they will meet, they would sit down in, in a row and they would meet like uh, people, like the audience would come in and then they would meet everyone and then, um, and hopefully find new love, I guess. Ah, this is a bus I painted. Um, I, do, I don't have the video, but this is a bus that I painted for the exhibition. Uh, it was the first time I painted on the bus and I believe that, uh, I don't know whether if anyone has done this before, but I, I, I think that I'm the, the first to actually paint on the bus directly. Uh, we did this in two days and the bus is now on the streets. Uh, it's bus service 502, so if you see it on the road, take a picture or something and uh, let me know. Right, and, and that's it. All right. <laughs> For those big critics on Instagram, because he, he posted very regularly, and this morning he, he posted how he did it. 
So it, it's mentioned on the bus, it's hand painted, so actually it's not a sticker, mm. but it's directly painted on the bus. And that's a very interesting video, uh, so I highly encourage you. Uh, I would like, um, under the name of uh, Essay, to thank you very much. For no, the thank you. Started, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. But you started uh, just at a bit of three, and I know that you will go back to, to continue, though we can continue to discuss with you after. Maybe some of you want to ask one or two questions to, to speak critically. Hi, uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, so, why are you always painting in black and white? Oh, um, <laughs> I said this before, but, but, but uh, black and white because. Because, <laughs> uh, because I'm, I'm uh, partially colorblind, so I can't see certain colors. So, uh, for me, it's just easier to paint black and white so that people can see what I'm painting. So when we are looking at a piece of work that I did, you know, then it's just easier just to talk about it rather than second guess what color it is. Yeah. <laughs> is that cool? <laughs> yes, you know. Yeah. From from what I've seen, I mean, this, that there is always something going on with the heads of your characters. Uh, it's either the head is exploding or the head is hidden, it's crowned, or there's also always something going on with it. Is it important to you? Does it uh, does it meant to mean something? Um, I think, again, like the, uh, the, the drawings that I'm doing is a reflection of who I am and who I am is I'm quite shy. So I feel like, I mean, like even this thing, you have no idea how much um, this is, you know, like it's not draining, but it's, it's very exhausting because I'm, I'm very introverted. So whenever I talk to someone, um, you know, it's, the, it's that thing of, Talking to someone, having a conversation, and then going back home and thinking about the conversation, you know, thinking whether if I've um, offended you or if I've said anything to to you know to piss you off, and I would go over over like I would run it in my head for two three days until I meet the next person. So it happens all the time, and I, I think I'm better at um, at bet I'm better at managing it now, but it still happens. But I understand the value of you know, being here and talking to people. And, um, you know, I feel like, I feel that if I have something to share or if I have anything of value to give, um, you know, I don't think it should stop me, that, that feeling of not wanting to talk to people. Yeah. Any other questions? No, thank you. Why the headphones? Why the headphones? Uh, I have the headphones on for two reasons. One reason is to keep me calm. So when I'm painting, I don't know whether if you see me paint, I paint freehand. I don't have a sketch. So I try to keep it as zen as possible. So I'm, I usually play like a FX twin and some drum and bass in, on, on my headphones. Sometimes I play like really loud music just to drown out everything else. And also, um, it's to, I would say, you know, if you see me downstairs, you want to talk to me, just tap me on the shoulder. But I feel that it kind of limits the interaction a bit, which is a good and a bad thing. The good thing about the, the limiting of interaction is that you really have to say something important to tap me on the shoulder, to put my headphones down and for me to have an interaction with you. So usually when when people just wanted to tell me that hey, it's a nice piece of job or your work is a piece of shit, I'm sorry. Um, uh, they would usually have to, they would usually have, to, you know, like, like it has happened many times, like, yeah, hey, I don't like what, what, what you're doing. But if I have my headphones on, I don't really hear it. Um, and it kind of drowns out. Uh, so, you know, if you want to talk to me and have a conversation about the work, you tap me on the shoulder and I will, like, take off my headphones and, and, and I will have that conversation. But kind of, sometimes the, the, the remarks kind of throw me off a bit. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's the, the, the reason. Yeah. I used to have earphones, um, but people wouldn't see the earphones. So they would keep talking to me and I'm like, and I would see like a face I'm like, hey, <laughs> it's like quite, quite strange. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.